Hi everybody, it's Dave again, East Rosebud Fly and Tackle here in Billings, Montana. Today I'm going to show you how to tie the Purple Haze. Purple Haze came on the scene probably 10 years ago. It's just a variation of the basic Adams. It just has a purple body. It's been a very successful fly. I don't know if anybody can say exactly why, but um, it's one of the top choices here in Montana for fishing. Really the only caveat is a post, and the post can be made from McFly Lawn, like I do, with, which is a polypropylene material. You can use calf tail hair, you can use calf body hair, you can use a turkey flat to make your post. It's totally up to you. And with the body, there you have several options. You can use purple single strand floss, like this unifloss. You can use dubbing, and we'll use a little bit of it to fill in for the thorax. This is Antron dubbing or you can use a turkey biot, which I'm going to use today. I like the biot because it's very durable. It makes a nice segmented body. It doesn't require any reinforcement like wire or anything like that. So the components are fairly simple. You can tie them with a moose body or moose hawk tail if you want to fish it in more turbulent water. I tend to like a thinner tail, so I'll be using CDL. Um, tailing material for the tail on this fly. It's my favorite tailing material. So we'll start off with our thread at the 75% point on the hook. Wrap a nice smooth body back just at the end of the shank, right at the back of the barb. Now I'm going to grab a few of these CDL fibers. They are spade fibers in case you're wondering. True spade feathers are getting harder and harder to find on the genetic hackle, so this is an excellent substitute for it. Even up the tips, pull off a good little clump. We want to measure these hook shank length, which is typical for a dry fly. Start it with one wrap, roll it up over the top, pull it up a little bit. I don't like that at all. See if I can get even tips this time, folks. We're going to do it. We're going to do it right. That's much better. All right, shank length. Tie it in up on top of the hook shank. Nice and snug. And we're going to wrap back up to about a 60% point on the hook from the back. Now we're going to continue wrapping our thread forward to behind the eye, and then we're going to bring it back right at the 75% point where we want our wing. What I use is a third of a strand of McFly Lawn, and I also add a few strands of Pearl Crystal Flash. You'll be surprised how much farther away you can see this wing than just the standard McFly lawn. And of course you can tie your post in a variety of colors. It doesn't have to be white. You can use pink, chartreuse, dark dun, whatever helps you to see the fly best. We're going to cut off about oh, an inch and a half piece here. I'm going to twist my thread to cord it up to strengthen it because we need to firmly attach this post to the fly. We do not want it to move. I'm using UTC 70. You can use Vivas. I like that thread as well. I'm going to take two wraps, one on top of the other. I'm going to kind of sneak the front back and make an X wrap going the other direction. Pull your wings out. This will help to consolidate those wraps because you want to try to keep all your wraps right on top of each other. And use these next wraps snug it down with every wrap to try to consolidate your fibers into two separate wings. End up with your thread in front of the rear wing. Now we're going to combine these two halves. We're going to be doing everything on the post counterclockwise and you won't really be able to see why I do this until the very end but it makes the tie off very easy and it makes the hackle very, very secure on the post. 
So we're going to take three wraps. I don't know if you can see this, but I'm wrapping right at the base of the post, right up against the fly shaft, it's, or the fly shank itself, the hook shank. Three tight wraps. And up in the front of the post, one wrap to lock it in. Now at this point, we're going to actually post the post itself. Once you've tied enough of these flies, you'll be able to post your hackle at the same time you're posting your post. But I'll do it simple this time. We're going to start right at the base. Your post should be fairly stiff if you've tied it in tight. And we're going to wrap up a couple of eye lengths. The parachute really doesn't have to be that long. Wrap it up, wrap it back down. Try to keep your post nice and smooth. Your hackle will wrap much better. When you get to the bottom, one more turn again to reorient your thread in the correct direction. This is a Dunn Grizzly saddle hackle that I like to use. I hate to cut hackle, but a hackle this long will simply be in the way. All right, we want enough bare stem on our hackle so that when we tie it against the post, we have bare hack or bare stem at our very first wrap. This will help to keep that first wrap of hackle from flaring. It's important that the shiny side of the hackle be towards you when you tie it in. You must keep it that way so that we can orient it properly on the post. That'll become clear here in just a couple of seconds. Tie our hackle stem in to the eye. Now as we come back with our thread, and don't let your post material get caught, Stand this hackle up so that the inside, the concave side of the feather, is facing the post. This is very important because when we actually hackle this fly, we're going to bend this over backwards so that the barbs are sticking up. So like I said previously, once you've done a few of these, you can tie this hackle in before you actually post the post and do both of them together and save yourself some time. So as you post this hackle, make sure that you keep the inside, the concave side of the hackle, up against the post. I prefer a saddle hackle when I do parachute fly simply because the, the quill is much more flexible than neck hackle and I can get a lot of flies from one hackle. All right, we ended up with a turn in front of the post. Now we're going to come behind the post. UTC thread is good for this type of fly because it flattens well. What we want to do right now is build a tapered underbody with our thread. So we'll simply tape it back, taper it forward, just like the abdomen of a mayfly. Although exactly which mayfly this is supposed to represent, I'm not sure. Now we're back by our tail again. Now, on a size 14 and larger fly, and this is a size 14, you'll need a turkey biot simply for the length. For a fly size 16 and smaller, you can get away with a goose biot. Now I can tie this in where I have a ribbed, a segmented abdomen by tying it in with this hard edge, this leading edge forward, or smooth body, or excuse me, or I can tie it where it makes a very ribbed body by tying it in with the hard or leading edge at the back. For this particular body, I want a smooth body, the calibatus that I tie. I like the, uh, the ribbed effect on the abdomen. And I'd like to capture this on my side of the hook. Bring it up a little bit. This is your second opportunity to build a taper. You want to make sure that you don't overdo the taper or you'll run out of buy out. Now normally, and of course I forgot, I use, a, I use a very thin head cement. I coat this body before I wrap the buy out and it doesn't hurt to put just a little bit at the base of the post. All you do now is wrap the buy out. Now you want to make sure if you want a smooth abdomen to keep this hard edge leading. 
That's why I use these hackle pliers that have a rubber tip. It allows me to make sure that when I make this first turn that I don't get this biot twisted and in the wrong direction. And we're going to wrap this just like hackle. And if you look closely, you'll see how that leading edge wants to stand up just a little bit. If we wrapped it the other way, it would stand up quite a bit. But with each wrap, then, we're covering that rib and creating a nice, smooth, segmented body. Bring it right up to the front of the post. Make a wrap and kind of bend that biot around the hook shank. A second one, tie it down. And I apologize, but like I say, I normally use the head cement for that. We'll make another wrap or two just to make sure that that biot is secure and smooth. All right, now we're going to use a little of this Antron dubbing to fill up our thorax a little bit and to assist in tying off our hackle. Unfortunately, UTC thread is not the best thread to dub on. It's very slick. I prefer Vivas, but this is what I've got right now. So we're going to dub a couple of inches, very fine. You can use any kind of dry fly dubbing for this that you like. And we're just going to make a couple of X's here around the base of the post to give us kind of an idea of an ab of a thorax. Wrap it towards the eye, a little shy of the hook, hook eye. And then we want just a little bit more here for when we tie off our hackle. All right, we want to end with the thread directly in front of the post, just like that. Now we're going to get our hackle and we're going to bend it back 90 degrees, make sure we have all of our post material fibers out of the way. We're going to wrap this hackle with the hackle points sticking up like an umbrella. Now that first wrap was bare um, feather there. That helps to keep that from splaying too far forward. You only need about five or six wraps. We're going to stop just above the hook shank. If you make another wrap, if you get greedy with this, when you tie it off, you're going to have hackle fibers hanging below the plane of the hook and you'll end up cutting them off anyway. It's important that you hold the hackle back down towards you because we're going to now trap that hackle stem against the post. Raise your thread straight up, parallel with the plane of the hook shank, make one, two, we have just enough dubbing now when we come over the body, you don't see the thread. We come back to our normal rotation and make two turns behind the eye. One is an insurance turn in case I flub the whip finish. Now as you see, these hackles form an upside down umbrella. If we had tied the hackle in the other way where the hackle fibers were down, we'd have two choices. We could either tie off on the post itself, whip finish, which is a miserable job and I think makes an ugly fly, or as we tried to tie the hackle off, we would actually be loosening it as we tried to tie it. This way everything stays nice and tight, and if you watch carefully, if you make your whip finish slow, these hackle fibers won't get trapped. They'll kick up and out of the way. And that's the real beauty of this method. And I owe this to Charlie Craven. I learned this from one of his books. Thank you, Charlie. I have tried every type of parachute fly known to man, and this is the best period. So we now clip our thread, reach in with your scissors tip, remove the rest of your hackle. I like my post to be about as tall as the hackle itself. And this is important, and thankfully I found my head cement. I like to keep this, this is just plain lacquer. I like to keep it really thin. What we're going to do, we're going to put a drop here right at the top of the hackle. Let it wick down into the post. It will not stick to the hackle. Don't worry about that. Once it dries, you can brush it right off. 
and there's just enough left on the post where you can put a dab there on the thread without obscuring the eye. And there you have a parachute blue haze, purple haze. Very similar to the Adams, which I'll tie in another section. Thanks for joining us. As always, if you have questions or comments,